Hi everyone. Today I'm here to show you a video of me unboxing my brand new delivery from my company, the Surface Pro 7 Plus, which is going to be replacing my trusty old Surface Pro 3 that I've had since I've started working here. Originally this thing would have come with uh, Windows 8.1, I think, when it was released back in 2014. Um, but as times have moved on, we're quite a way away from that yet. It was about time to get my upgrade. Um, so I will be missing all my lovely stickers, but I've got to learn not to hold on to these things too much. Um, what I won't miss is the really sluggish performance you get with modern apps today, uh, like Microsoft Teams, and poor camera quality. Battery life is about lasts about an hour and a half now before I need to run and find a charge a cable. So uh, let's see what's just arrived in the post and we can talk a bit too about Windows Autopilot. So this is my usual workspace. I've got my Surface Pro 3 docked up here. Really like that versatility of the Surface Pro form factor. Uh, you can take it from like a tablet, take it on the go. Um, really easy to slip it in your bag, but also have a full size desktop um, that you can just do whatever you want with. It's been really handy in lockdown because I can just quickly grab that off, take the keyboard with me, and um, then I can go and go anywhere in the house um, with a bit of quiet to do my work. Um, but as I said, this is time to go. Um, and this is what arrived in the post the other day. Uh, I've got a new type cover. Pretty much the same actually because that type cover is not too old but if we're recycling with the old devices to, uh, with the charity um, we're going to give them the old ones and I get the new stuff. So this is the really exciting part. No longer do I have to go into the office which is a long long way away from where I live um, to go and pick up a new device and get my old one in, maybe wait a whole day and waste a bit of time there productivity wise. Um, Instead, they just get sent straight directly to all the people at the end. And this is what's in the box. So time for a close-up, I think. So, let's see what we've got in here. A uh, nice little message saying the packaging was designed with the planet in mind. Made from 64% recycled materials, uh, which cuts waste and carbon emissions, which is fantastic, as always. A uh, bit of paper, uh, sorry. And... Let's see what's in this lovely safety protected bag. There we go. The new Surface Pro 7 Plus. So it feels a bit lighter than my old one, uh, which makes sense. I think it's about 50 grams or so lighter, not too much. Uh, what we have got though is a slightly bigger screen, which I can see straight away. Uh, let's see what else we've got in the box. Guessing this is information. Yeah. No one needs to ever read that. Now this is the point of autopilot is that anyone can get sent a laptop in the post and they can just plug in and get going within an hour. I've got my power cable. Looks very similar to the one I've got now. Just a bit cleaner and less worn out. Anything under here? I don't think so. No, that's it. All there is in the box. So as you get with most surfaces, um, there is no keyboard, there's no stylus included. You have to buy them separately. So before I turned it on, I just wanted to point out one of the big changes here is that Surface Pros have now got USB-C. So that's what's replacing the mini display port, which is always a bit bespoke uh, in the UK. There's not many things you use display port. USB-C is much more versatile, um, so I can do the display and peripherals and sorts through that. I've got your one old style USB port, so I can connect a normal hub to that to give me all the ports I need when I'm on my desk. You've got a little power slot there. Uh, not much else is visually different with it, apart from you get the slightly more modern logo that's been on them for a while. Um, and you can just about see the infrared cameras at the top that are used for Windows Hello, which is that face recognition, secure sign on, meaning you don't need to have passwords. So now it's time to turn it on. I've unwrapped everything. I've uh, got the power connector ready just to be on the safe side. It's a nice magnetic one so it just snaps straight in. And we've got the new keyboard out of the bag as well. And if you've never seen one before, they just really click easily in. Get that snap. And then you can have it flat or it kind of magnetises up at a slight angle. So 
let's press the power on button and see what we get. So Windows Auto Autopilot, that is a feature of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, and used to be called Microsoft Intune. Um, and the power of that is it doesn't need to connect to any of your organization's internal infrastructure, if they still have any. Um, so what actually happens is the factory where the laptops come through from, the original equipment manufacturer, sends our company, Visual, or yours, a list of all of these special hardware IDs that are unique to each device. They then get uploaded into the Intune portal. So that means as soon as I turn this on, it's going to ask me for an internet connection. I can connect and it will ping Intune um, as the service and figure out that this is linked to my organization. So this isn't specific to surfaces. It is any, any Windows 10 hardware that you have. So I looked for the language, does that because different languages, different keyboards. Um, so that can make a difference if you're say typing in a password and the to is actually a quotation mark or a dollar sign. Um, so it's just confirming that it's the right layout. I don't need another one, so I can skip that. And then it's asking me to connect to a network. So I'll connect to my little Wi-Fi mesh. No peeking at the password. So next, uh, yep, I'm happy for everything on this network to see each other. Okay, and that's connected. Let's click next. So you can see saying, now we have some important setting up to do. And the device is now gonna restart. So what it should have done in the background is just ping the Microsoft Intune service, realize that it's connected and the unique hardware ID is stored uh, against my organization's tenant. And when it starts up, I'll know if it's worked because it should ask me to log in with my email address and show you now a little company logo coming in too. So that first bit only took a couple of minutes just to put in the keyboard of the network. Let's see what happens next. Again, just to point out, this has never gone to my company's head office, to our IT department. It's literally come from the Microsoft warehouse where the services are stored and shipped directly to my home. So you can see now, welcome to Visual Limited. So I know it's definitely right, it's connecting to my organization. It's saying it needs my corporate credentials to sign in. So I will put my Visual email address in there. And just hit next. So it's touch screen as well, so I don't need to worry about the trackpad. Um, and now it is saying that I need to approve because I've got multi-factor authentication set up, which if you haven't, make sure you do too. And it's asking me to uh, just use the authenticator app on my phone, which is actually what's recording this. So let's see if this works and I can uh, authenticate it at the same time as recording. Uh, what just happened then was I had the prompt come up on my phone on the authenticator app, hit the number that it was telling me to hit. And that's now, uh, instead of me having to type in my password and storing anything about my password on this device, I just use that multi-factor authentication. Um, you might be thinking, how is that more secure than a password? Well, it's because this um, tablet has got a trusted platform module chip in it, the TPM chip, and that uh, really hard, pretty much uncrackable chip in there that stores a security um, identification. So that's something that I have. And then it's linking um, my phone app, which is another factor of authentication that is strongly stored in my account in Directive Directory and lets me log in without having to do my password at all, which is fantastic. Um, it's saying that I can use my face, Windows Hello, on this. So let's do that. Um, okay. So what you just saw there was Windows Hello. Um, Windows Hello works with a number of methods. You can use a pin, um, and then uh, you have to have a pin in the background. So excuse me while I type mine in. So originally we set that to 
six digits. Um, you don't need to go crazy with the pin security like a password because um, it's literally only relevant to this device and my account on this device. So um, that is stored in that TPM chip in the laptop so that um, it's not hackable um, and is a lot more stronger than a password could be, which could be easily fished out. So I'm going to be able to log in straight away with my face through the Hello camera, or if that's not working, um, I've got it skilled or something, I can just type in my pin. Um, so now it is loading up. So what you would have seen there is me sign in, set up my pin for this device, and now straight away, Teams has opened up, signed in. Um, let's have a look at the start menu. Um, I can see Office has already come down onto there. Um, any other specific apps I have will come down in the background now. That's a setting you can say either let people into the desktop or stuff downloads in the background or um, wait until everything's installed and then let them log in. So you can see here, like less than 10 minutes from getting it out of the box to now having a working desktop. And as most of the stuff nowadays is accessible online, I use the Outlook web app instead of Outlook desktop anyway, um, I can just continue starting straight away. Because all of my documents are stored in OneDrive for business, um, and all my settings are tied into my Windows account as well, this will start to look exactly like my old laptop in a couple of minutes. So this is just me loading up the new Microsoft Edge browser um, and it will sign in, in to that. And then I'll have single sign on to all of my apps as well because we use that feature of Azure Active Directory too. So one thing I had to do uh, with this new device was get a new USB-C hub to extend to my big monitor. Um, and I'm just going to add in my Bluetooth devices. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. So I just got asked for one last reboot and it's finished installing stuff in the background. Um, so now if I look at the camera, Windows Hello should work. It returns a views message. That was pretty quick. I had um, this Logitech Brio camera. It's really great 4K quality camera and Windows Hello compatible. And I used to use that when I um, had the poor performance of my old Surface Pro 3. Um, that would take quite a while to sign in. That was pretty much instant there. Um, so no passwords that anyone can fish away from me. Uh, just log me straight in. I can see I've got the corporate desktop background on now, uh, which is a good sign that it's pretty much finished doing whatever it needed to do. And it's only been, I'd say all in all, including getting out of the box, has been like 15 to 20 minutes maximum. And I've got this business ready device um, straight away, comparing that to what it used to be like and what it's still like in a lot of organizations. Um, see how that's not only useful for times like this in lockdown where everyone's stuck at home anyway but um, just all the time whether you're in an office when you're out of the office um, it's just a lot better process <laughs> than what anything else used to be the IT department didn't have to touch um, anything they just uh, had already set the settings up in Intune beforehand and this has gone to like 100 people over a weekend Everyone's got their new devices ready. I could have done that at the start of the day and I wouldn't have been uh, any less productive than a normal day while uh, probably drinking my coffee. Um, so that's it. I'm ready to work. But as it's Saturday, I don't think I'll bother and I will um, finish there. So I did actually forget one critical last step, uh, which some people might think is almost offensive to do, but I think it's essential. So I've got my secret uh, stash of extra stickers so that I can start to really personalise this surface, make it my own and also uh, help recognise it when I do get to go back to the office and need to pick mine out of a pile of laptops. So while I have a last little play, um, if you want to get more information about Windows Autopilot or how to transform your workplace into a smarter working, more automated 
um, company, then give us a call, get in touch with us at Ridgel, and we will be happy to help.